Hello everybody, thanks for stopping by. I just wanted to do a show and tell video today. This isn't really uh, about anything that's available in Visio. This is more about what you can do if you happen to be a decent programmer and want to extend Visio for your own purposes. So a lot of the times I have to create drawings for customers or shape sets for customers and one of the things I need to do is match colors. And Visio has RGB formulas that you can type into the shape sheet, but that gets really old. I can use color droppers and other applications, but I still end up with a hex code or a RGB value that I have to end up typing into either the line fill or text cells, uh, color cells of a, of a Visio shape. So I found that really tedious, and I've been wanting to make my own color dropper for years and years and years. So here's sort of some con concocted scenario. I've got some graphics I got off the web, so let's see. I was over on the Salesforce page and say I want to, maybe I'm doing some work for some Salesforce integration, and I've got this graphic with the little raccoon and the nice arch behind it. I've copied this image, and I've pasted it into Visio, and you can see I need a bigger background. I need this blue, and maybe I want to match some of these colors and put this cloud logo on it somehow. So you know, I can try to change the fill color. Let's see, where's that at? Fill color, more more colors like this, and try to match the color here, you know, by eye. But that's that's going to be really difficult. Even It's even worse here. Here I got all the possibilities, but, you know, you'd have to be really good to match that color. And, uh, you know, and even if you're off by, you know, one little pixel, you're going to see the difference in the color. Even if I get really close with that uh, green, you're still going to see the difference. So let's just pick this one here. I mean, you can see if I'm not right on, it's going to show up really badly. So what I've done is I've got my, my VIT. This is my Visio illustration tools. Now, this is an, a Microsoft VSTO add-in. So that's a library you can install with Visual Studio, and then you can start programming in C Sharp or VB.net against Visio. A lot of the examples on my website show VBA or Visual Basic code. But I prefer to work with C Sharp because you get a lot of modern features and better user interfaces. So the first thing I want to do is get some of the colors out of this image. And so I made this color sampler as part of the, the VIT here. So th everything I've made in this group comes from my add-in. So I put a bunch of alignment functions over here. Uh, I can I can collapse it up if I'm not using the tools. I can actually turn off the add-in if I don't want it. I can unload it. But this is just a nice little thing to collapse and expand it. And then I've got some things here. I've got a bunch of functions here that I'll be adding more to as time goes on. So let's click on the color sampler. Bring that dialog over so you can see it. So I mentioned you could, with uh, C Sharp, you could do some really sophisticated uh, user interfaces. This is pretty bad, but it's just, just a rough thing. This is usually using WPF or Windows Presentation Foundation. But what I want to do is not minimize Visio when I start sampling because I'm going to take the colors off this image that I already brought into Visio. If you wanted to sample from some other application that's open, you could leave this on and it would minimize Visio and you could start clicking away. But let's just see what happens. We start, we click Start Sampling, and I've got this big cursor that shows me the color I'm over. And if you, you, have, a, if you have a case where you have a really small amount of the color, you can actually right-click and it'll zoom in on it so if you get right close here you'll see there'll be a bunch of dithering when I right click right there you can see that that's the S there so I could pick you know the the hard green or I could pick some subtle shade of it according to that image so what I'm gonna do is just click away at these main swaths here and we'll get this blue here and once I've got the the colors I want I can I can remove them if I want I can click here but let's go add them back. So once I have these colors, I have these RGB values, but I don't want to type those in at all. So after a few seconds of not sampling, it stops. You know, or I can start sampling again. It leaves my color list there. You can see as long as this is throbbing up here, that means it's still going. Or I can just say stop sampling. So now I have all this this stuff. I can I can sort by hue or by the reds or by the greens or by the blues or the original order. And that's nice if you have a lot of colors. I can remove the ones I don't want. And then I can say, make Visio rectangles out of these. Okay, so now I have a shape for each color. And so I could use, for example, the Format Painter built into Visio 
and just click on that and apply that color to, to this shape like that. That's nice, but what I find is a lot of times I need to take a color and apply it to just the text or just the line or just the uh, fill. So I this sort of a companion function is my, I think it's called the Uber, Uber Format Painter. When I click on this, it doesn't really do anything unless you have a shape selected. So you click on the shape that has the the format you want and now I can let's just you know I can apply this color to the fill of the selected shape or to the line or to the text so you can see I've applied that color to I've taken this fill color and applied it to that shapes line and text color but in this case what we really need is we want more blue and there's no way to really stretch this image to get the blue so I'm going to select this blue and I can refresh based on fill line or text but we'll just refresh now we've got this blue we'll click on this rectangle and we'll apply that you can see that's a perfect match I'll zoom in here I don't even know where the edge is so that's pretty good okay so you can't see that at all let's zoom way in there okay that's pretty good so that just saves you a lot of trouble right there let's get rid of the line looks a little bit nicer so that's nice so now we have this nice blue background and we can do whatever we want with it unfortunately a lot of images have graduated fills that go from dark to lighter light to dark so it's hard to match that but if you have you know flat graphics like this you can pretty much do what you need to do so now let's let's work on this part so again this is a bitmap so we have the color over here so we'll refresh based on the fill you can see that's that and we'll apply to the fill and to the line and then we'll make this a little bit bigger so maybe we're trying to turn these arches into something a little bit more cloudy so we'll do it like that you know no promises that it's a great graphic and we'll just make that bigger and just nudge that over a little bit and then I'll just control drag out a couple of copies and we can refresh and we'll apply that to fill and line I'll put that one over here and then we'll refresh on that and we'll apply the fill and line and you can see how we could somehow rotate these over and maybe turn that arch into a bunch of Salesforce-esque clouds with perfectly matched color. So that's part of my uh, visual, uh, Visio illustration tools that I've been working on. Uh, it's not really available for download or for sale or anything like that, but I think it's sometimes it's just good to offer you guys food for thought to show you what's possible, things you can do with Visio if you put your mind to it and uh, get more value out of the tool than just what's built in. So if, if there's no feature, if there's a feature you need that's not there, you can make it yourself. So thanks for watching and talk to you soon.